Welcome to the NYC CNC uh, overview or tutorial of my new bandsaw. I um, knew that uh, I wanted a vertical bandsaw. It was a, a top item on my list when I moved into my new apartment here, and I wasn't really able to justify the size or the space requirements for the, the larger vertical style units, so I was looking for a smaller medium sized one. Um, I wanted to be careful to stay away from some of them that are are designed to run at a much higher uh, uh, RPM, which are designed, I think, more for cutting wood. So I found this one, which is a the Microlux model from uh, Micromark. Here. They make a lot of hobbyists and miniature tooling. If you haven't seen them, I definitely suggest checking out their website or ordering their catalog. Um, and this bandsaw is. I forget the horsepower, but it provides a sixth inch clearance depth there. And as you can see, uh, the white table on the top here, I'll get to in a minute, it came with a seven or eight inch square table, which allows uh, adjusting at a different angle. That way, I'll probably keep it mostly perpendicular to the blade. And then it's got a, I guess, a waterproof or coolant proof on off switch and an adjustable uh, rheostat here on the feed rate um, I keep it up higher on the uh, when I'm cutting aluminum I forget but I think it's about I actually have to look I don't remember what the RPM is off the top of my head anyways the problem with this uh, bandsaw is that it comes from the factory with um, just a small as you can see the groove in there which runs parallel to the uh, to the band. And that groove is designed to fit this piece in, which allows you to um, use it just simply to feed a piece through, or you can use it at an angle as well. It's definitely good for, say, ripping a piece, um, you know, like this, and using it to feed it through um, and keep it keep the piece perpendicular to the blade. But um, my problem is that a lot of times what I want to do is try and cut a piece down to size. Um, and I need a, really needed a fence to do that. So I basically just went out and purchased this, which was a $10 um, shelf from Home Depot, uh, and cut it down so that it's about 20 inches wide, and then spent some time just measuring out where my feed um, line would go, and then bolted it to two bolt holes that were already in the underlying table. The trick was just to, to take my time to make sure I got it perfectly square because obviously now that I've made this fence here, um, you know, the fence is only as good as the table is square to the blade. So, um, so far measuring it with the dial or the calipers has indicated that it's quite square. Um, have cut a fair amount, a few things and it's gone quite well, but uh, time will tell how it holds up. Um, so what I needed though was a fence and so I did this project today, Oops. and I will just show you. Um, wanted something that was budget and uh, fully adjustable, so I had some of this 6061 aluminum around. And if you notice, one of the tricks here is that um, I wanted to make sure that the fence had a clean uh, line all the way down the fence edge. So basically, I'll you know I'll set this up, and then let's say I've got a uh, you know wide piece here once that's bolted down typical just like you'd see on a bandsaw or a table saw um, use that to guide the piece through and I think it should be pretty accurate definitely inside of um, 50 thousandths or so anyways just uh, cut these out um, put a, a socket head cap screw in there recess the top of the hole for uh, both for aesthetic and also because uh, for instance, on this one, I needed to keep it um, out of the way of the fence guide. And um, so the piece in the back here is designed mostly to keep the fence square to the table. And then the piece in the front, um, I bolted through to the fence on the side here. And then the uh, a larger 10 uh, or quarter by 20 bolt um, goes through and pinches the table, which is what provides the rigidity. So once it's clamped down there, um, it's 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 held quite rigidly in place, so it should be fine from a uh, strength standpoint as a fence. And uh, 
The only other thing I think I might do, I'm going to give it a few days and see, is um, measure out inch increments and put an inch by inch grid on my tabletop with uh, maybe a permanent marker or something. I think it would be helpful for just rough sizing it or giving it a, a eyeball reference tool as I'm laying stuff out. I think most of the time I'll still probably use a more accurate means, whether it's calipers or a tape measure, each time I want to make a cut, but I thought having those uh, inch by inch grids might help. Anyways, I'll be sure to, to post any updates I do do, but overall, uh, really happy with how this turned out. There's there are more links and more information and photos available on the blog. Check it out, www.nyccnc.com. I just remembered uh, one more thing I wanted to throw in. Uh, I don't have access to a router these days. I wish I did. Um, and if I get access to one, or, or perhaps I'll, I'll take the table over uh, to where I can find access to one, I think I would um, re-implement this piece. I think I'd actually remake this to be a bit beefier, um, including a thicker piece here, and so that it was more rigid and more uh, precise. And I don't even know if I would want to use um, the angle measurement simply because uh, yeah, I really would want it to be true to perpendicular. Perhaps I would have two, one that was adjusted, one that was rigid. Um, and then I would, would mill or route out a groove which would allow me to um, use this or similar type of piece again. It certainly is useful both uh, for safety reasons and there will be cuts that I'll want to make. Um, like I said earlier, you know, if you want to take off a piece of this, you know, you really want to use a tool like this and a guide to keep it, uh, to keep your cut smooth and even. Uh, so I'll be sure to post an update when I do that.